Today we're going to see what strange fire is and how it parallels the usage of these modern day Bible versions that do not source from God the Father. The ESV, today's most popular Bible version, and the NIV, another popular version, etc. These are strange fire before God. We're going to see what the Bible has to say about strange fire and how these Bible versions parallel. Now, speaking of parallel, look to the left where it says, in heaven. We're going to follow that the things that God ordained on earth parallel the things that are in heaven. We're going to start with the golden altar before the throne in heaven. Revelation 8, 5 says, And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Now, this golden altar that burns before the throne, I'm going to ask you, whose hand do you think started that fire which burns at the golden altar, which is before the throne? Angels? The hands of men? I think not. It was started by the hand of God. Let's review quickly about the hand of God. This is an every word of God review. Here we have on the left the 1611 King James Bible, Luke 4.4, 4, Matthew 4.4, 4, Deuteronomy 8.3, all of the flagship verses which state that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of God. And they, of course, add up to 1611. And we add the chapter column we have 16, and the verse column, we have 11. And uniquely matching, we've seen in uh, our recent video how the structure of the bones of the hand have eight in the base, three in the thumb. This makes the base of the hand, the Deuteronomy 8, 3. And then, of course, each bone having four fingers is the Luke 4, 4, Matthew 4, 4, all of that. Adding up likewise to 1611, the year of the King James Bible. Now to see that in depth, go see our recent video, episode 35 on our full length videos. The King James Bible is literally the hand of God. Because we're going to be employing this wisdom today in our video. And here it is, starting with this, in heaven, the word made flesh hand this is the hand that started the fire which burns at the golden art altar which is before the throne in heaven now what we see is that god ordained a mirror image burning on earth in the tabernacle Leviticus 9.24 says, And there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat. Now, this was how the fire was started on the altar in the tabernacle. It was started by the hand of God. No man could start this fire. Leviticus 6.12 says that that fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. That was a perpetual fire burning sourced from God. This is the hand right here, the 1611 hand that started the fire which burned 
at the brass altar, which is before the most holy place. The same hand that started the fire, which burns at the golden altar, which is before the throne in heaven. So here we see completely in union with the prayer of the Lord Jesus, who said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we see that there's a mirror fire burning. And both had to be started by the hand of God. And we know that that hand is the 1611 word of God hand. So we saw Leviticus 9.24, the Lord would start the fire. We saw in Leviticus 6.12, that fire would burn perpetually. It was never to go out. And then in Leviticus 16.12, it says, And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. So here's where the strange fire journey began. Because this fire that was to be taken from the altar, that's the starting point. And to be brought within the veil, that's in the holy place, was to be only the fire that was started by God. But Nadab and Abihu, the priests, they brought strange fire. Instead of the fire started by God at the altar, they brought strange fire. That's fire that was started by another. And we can see by looking at the letters of strange fire, that by rearranging those letters, we have anger and strife. When you bring strange fire to God, this will be the result. It will kindle the anger of God and put strife between God and man. It says in Leviticus 10, 1 and 2, And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. We see the anger and the strife taking place in these verses where we learn about strange fire. Now, what they inherited, what they reaped, was the Revelation 8-7 experience. We covered this verse. The first angel sounded, and there followed Hail and fire, that's coals of fire from the golden altar of God, mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. When that fire came down from heaven to devour Nadab and Abihu, that was coming directly from the altar of God in heaven. And they were consumed for bringing strange fire. Now, today's study, we're going to look and see that the ministry course in the tabernacle of that fire from the altar to the holy place to be presented to the Lord is an exact mirroring, not only of the things in heaven, but the things on earth regarding the ministry course of the word of God, which would mature into the King James Bible and the Lord Jesus the word of God, who would also mature to be before the Father in perfection. So fire from heaven, started by God, ever burning upon the altar, and then presented to the throne of God in the form of the fire burning the incense taken into the holy place to rise up to the nostrils of God. That was the journey. That was the ministry course. The fire from heaven, ever burning, and then returning to heaven by ascending in the smoke. 
And we see that same thing happen with the Word of God. The King James Bible was a seed from heaven, which I cover extensively in my book, Concealed from Christians for the Glory of God. And it was an ever-growing line of life through history, the very vine which would produce the fruit of the King James Bible. Therefore, what began in heaven as a seed planted on earth, ever growing, just like the fire of the altar, it says in Revelation 5, 1, that it returned them upon perfection to heaven, to the Father. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. The right hand of him that sat on the throne started on earth, it returned to the Father, came from the Father as a seed, it returned to the Father as a perfect book. And Jesus had this same ministry course, the uppercase W, Word of God, Jesus. He too came a seed from heaven, Galatians 3.16. And he was ever growing in the line of life, in the favor and wisdom of God and men. Read that in Luke 2. And here's how he summed up his ministry course. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Same ministry course as the King James Bible. Same ministry course as right here, the fire from heaven on the altar, ever burning, returning to the throne of God in heaven. These parallels are for our understanding. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that journey of the fire that was supposed to come from the altar to be brought into the holy place. And we're going to see that Nadab and Abihu, by taking strange fire, were not just instantly consumed, but God gave them three chances to repent. Their first stop was at the brass laver. So from the altar where the fire burned, your next stop as the priest with the fire was to be at this brass laver to wash before entering in to the holy place or the tabernacle itself. Exodus 30, 18 and 19, thou shalt also make a laver of brass and his foot also of brass to wash withal. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. And thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. So here the journey takes its first stop. Stop number one at the brass laver for the priest to wash. This is picturing this from the New Testament right here. Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now these words, gave himself for it, right here. Picture the altar. Where did Jesus give himself for the church? At the cross. That's the altar. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So we see that this ministry course of the New Testament is replicating the walk of the priest. From the altar, his next stop, the brass laver to wash. So we see Christ at the altar here, gave himself for the church, and then washing the church by the word, by the word. You cannot do this with strange fire. You cannot do this with the NIV and the ESV, etc. This was Nadab and Abihu, strike one. They were breaking the testimony of heaven and earth. The fire started in heaven at the throne of God. It was that 1611 King James Bible hand. And 
of fire burning at the altar on earth was also started by God directly. The 1611 King James Bible hand of God. But they took strange fire. And at their first stop point, they were being warned that the fire that they had, which was to be picturing the word of God, was not matching the word of God of the laver. Now next, having ignored the first stop, they go to stop two. Now they have entered inside the tabernacle with the strange fire. And they come immediately to the showbread, the table of the presence. And we're going to read about that right now. Stop number two, Leviticus 24, 5 and 6. Also, Exodus 25 and 30 teaches us, And thou shalt take fine flour and bake twelve cakes thereof. Two tenth deals shall be in one cake. And thou shalt set them in two rows, six on a row. That's six to the left and six to the right. We have a 66 with this showbread. Now, this was the second warning to Nadab and Abihu that they were offending the testimony of the word of God. 66 books of the completed, finished King James Bible were being testified to on the showbread table. Six in a row. Upon the pure table before the Lord, and thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me alway. Now that's just like a fire was to be ever burning before the Lord. And we find out that this is exactly the same thing that we see in this from the New Testament regarding the showbread. So look at John 21, 15 to 17, and look at the ministry course of the priest playing itself out here. Jesus, of course, being that priest, not taking strange fire, but taking himself as the word of God, the 1611 King James Bible. After all, he is the uppercase W word of God. Jesus saith to Simon Peter. Now here we see the altar in these words. Jesus saith to Simon Peter. Because Jesus was just crucified and now risen from the dead. So he is immediately coming from the cross, the altar. And what does he say? Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith to him again the second time. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Now here we see Jesus stopping. See how it goes three times? He's stopped at the brass laver, and he's washing Peter with his word. And then he takes him to the showbread, because he says, feed my lambs, feed my sheep feed my sheep. Now, this table of the showbread, which was testifying to the finished King James Bible, was Nadab and Abihu strike to breaking the testimony of heaven and earth. They would have one more chance, and it would be at stop number three. When they had the strange fire, they had to pass through the opposite side of the table of the showbread, where the golden candlestick was. Exodus 25, 31. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made, his shaft and his branches. Pay attention to this. His bowls, his mops, and his flowers shall be of the same. Now this is this right here. Peter who was being led by Jesus into the tabernacle in the last verse that we just saw, was astute in the Lord and quick by the Spirit. And so we read in 2 Peter 1.19, again, the journey of the priest from the altar to the laver, to the table of showbread, and past the golden candlestick, the light of God. Peter says this, 2 Peter 1, 19, We have also a more sure word of 
prophecy. Now, this word prophecy right here has everything to do with the altar, the word of prophecy, because the sum all of the prophecy of Israel in the Old Testament was the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. That was the germ of it all, the center, the centrix of everything, prophecy in the word of God, the death and reign, the suffering and the overcoming of Messiah. So with the word prophecy here, we see the altar coming forth. Then he says, after saying, we have also a more sure word, it's the word of God, of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Now these words, take heed. This is stopping at the brass laver. This is the washing heeding. And it's the table of the showbread because it's an eating heeding. And then he says, after saying, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Now this is exactly this candlestick in the holy place right here. Because in the tabernacle, it was pitch dark. There was to be no natural light allowed in, only the light of God. So we really see a light that shineth in a dark place. And that candlestick in the darkness of the holy place with its 66, get this, 66 bowls, knops, and flowers was also testifying to the finished word of God. We're going to look at this up close. But just here, Nehemiah and Abihu strike out. Strike three, you're out. Breaking the testimony, heaven and earth. Now here is that golden candlestick. You can read it in detail of its construction. Exodus 25, 31 through 36. And this right here is the three, one, one, and one, the knops and the bowls and the flowers. And on the right side, it had 27. The shaft was 12. On the left side, we had 27. And that totals the 66, revealing the finished book of the Bible with its 66 books. If we take the left and the middle together, Christ in the Old Testament, we have 39, 39 books of the Old Testament, leaving over here 27, 27 books of the New Testament left. So every stop that Nadab and Abihu were making with the strange fire was kindling the anger of God and producing strife between them and God. You cannot just take any word of God made by men to the Father. It must be started and ever burning according to the Lord. Now here, here is the altar of incense. This is where they committed their way. When they laid that strange fire on the altar of incense here on earth, Exodus 31, 8 and 9, it says, And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon. And when Aaron lighteth the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it. A perpetual, even as the fire was to be always burning, even as the showbread was to always be present. The perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. And it says, you shall offer no strange incense thereon. This is this right here, the altar of incense in heaven. Remember, it's all mirroring. The things on earth of the tabernacle were a mirror of that which is true in heaven. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. 
Nadab and Abihu broke the testimony in heaven and earth. Now, if you ask exactly what testimony was broken, it's the 1611, the testimony of the word of God, which is the King James Bible in its finished, perfected condition. Because the hand that started the fire in heaven was the hand that started the fire in earth. And it was the hand that planted the seed of the Lord Jesus, and it was the hand that planted the seed of the word of God. All three the altar with its ever burning fire, Jesus, the seed which grew to be the perfect man to please the Father, and the Word of God. Everything was according to it. All of those planted by the hand of God, started by the hand of God. But when those priests then, Nadab and Abihu, brought strange fire, they were exactly what we're seeing today in the priests in the church. The priests now in the church are bringing to God to ascend to him the strange fire of all of these Bibles that do not source from the Father. And this will ever be the result. Anger and strife the church has not learned. Now, doesn't this make more sense than ever? Because the 1611 fire burning in heaven was replicated on earth as the 1611 on earth. And Jeremiah 20 verse 9 says this, then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Isn't this what your hand and fingers look like when you flicker those fingers? If you take your 1611 bone hand, the 83 base, and the 4444 four, four, four fingers, and you move them like this, is this not looking to you like fire? Because this is the fire that burns before God, the 1611 started by the hand of God. And this is the fire that burns in the true word of God. The 1611 King James Bible started by the hand of God. 